this should be good. Sometimes I'm a kind warrior out here. Occasionally I am challenged, and in that case, the kind warrior must, must, must become a samurai. Movies. Lesbian? The other L word. Lesbian? Movies. Yippee guy. Buddy. I'm gonna need y'all for playing with me and pull out your big guns. Movies. Here's a designated slot. <laughs> Movies. Amish? Wake up, you silly old fucker! Movies. Would you say it's time for our viewers to crack each other's heads open and feast on the goo inside? Movies, 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 movies. For some unknown re 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 reason. Movies. We were recommended a film for the first time in quite a long time. We were. By Facebook user uh, Ryan Broville. Broville. Uh, you, you can go onto our Facebook and recommend us stuff at tfcpodcast.com forward slash Facebook or facebook.com forward slash TFC podcast. You can do either. So it's pretty good. The film was, what was it? I hope they serve beer in hell. Yeah. <clears throat> now, so do I, obviously. But I hope they serve beer in hell, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, I hope. Forget beer. <laughs> I hope they serve whiskey in hell. Well, it's funny you should say that, actually, because... Uh, I did take a cursory look at the Twitter sphere. That's interesting. And um, a Twitter user said that exact thing. I should, I probably should have signed into Twitter before we started, so that I could just snap it up. Yeah. That's that's what DJs do. Which we are that right on screen. Yeah, yeah, that'd be that'd be on screen ready. And then they probably play sound effects and stuff. But I'm finding that it's quite cumbersome, so I'll probably just uh, read this out. This is at Mr Macklin on Twitter. Mm -hmm. He said, fuck beer, I hope there's a whiskey in there. That's interesting. I'll actually give that a cheeky retweet. Before watching this film, I had no idea what it was about. It was based I on still a book. don't. We've <laughs> yeah. watched it now. It's based on a book, I believe, yeah. by Tucker Max. Called, sort of, I hope they serve beer in yeah, hell. Who is sort of the main character. Yeah. So I thought I'd just nip on IMDb, check out the non-spoiler reviews. Yeah. And um, I found one from Jack the Rupert hyphen 78 hyphen 566271 oh he's brilliant I like him big fan and he he's, he likes it he's Is he loving it yeah I'll just I'll just read you what he said go on then I tripped onto this movie don't know how you do that <laughs> at 0100 capital AM right oh he's he's a party animal just like Tucker then on a Sunday morning expecting to turn the TV right off and yeah. go to bed they storyline and the characters were too good to turn and walk away I found myself laughing so hard at the characters' lines, especially Tucker's. And I never watch movies to get a laugh, ever, in capitals to exclamation marks. I guess I liked it so much because it reminded me of my younger years and the guys I hung out with. There is always one in the group that everyone loves and hates all at the same time. Yeah. The instigator. The one who always talks you into what you know is a really bad idea, but you go and do it anyway. Oh, that'll be Tucker. I actually have a Party good animal. friend named Tucker who falls into that category. This was a FUN movie! Three exclamation mark. This movie made me want to go back to my 20s and or 30s and do it all again. Ah! The good old days! Four exclamation marks. LOL! Three exclamation marks. I will watch it again. Two thumbs up. Wow. Good use of two thumbs up. I enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah. That's that's my phrase though, so... Oh. Yeah, you probably, stole it. It. probably stole it from Bedside Chronicles. I've got a review here as well. All right. And this is from Van3672 from Antarctica. Ooh. And Van wasn't a fan. He wasn't a fan? No, 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 not at all of this film. Uh, I can read his review out to you. Yeah, go He gave it a measly one star out of ten, which I didn't even know was possible. Uh, he's entitled his review, Bad Movie, Bad Script. I hope they serve beer in hell is a poorly scripted, R-rated frat boy comedy based on Tucker Max's book of the same name. The movie is based on the so-called true stories of Tucker Max's book. The problem is that it's now coming out that these stories are likely not that true, in brackets, and heavily exaggerated. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. And the cinema exposes the weak storytelling of mishmashed comedic moments shoehorned into a script that is designed to glorify Tucker Max, the character and the author, at the expense of drama, comedy, and internal logic. The one positive note would be the quality of the actor. The lead actors are well cast and deliver the material sincerely, the problem being that the material is weak. Wow. Well, that review is useful to me. Is it? I'm going to give that a cheeky like. You're just going to avoid this film now, having, uh, having read that. Well, I think it's a little bit too late <coughs> for that. Yeah. Because we went ahead and threw watched it right on anyway. Yeah. As far as I can tell, we watched all of it. 
basically the plot of the film. Which Sorry? Was the... yeah, apparently, I, I didn't pick up on that at it all. It came in at an hour and 47 minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. It felt about three hours long. Yeah. The plot was Tucker Max. Yeah, TM. He, well, he, the plot here at IMDb says he tries to patch things up with his soon-to-be-married pal after botching things up at his bachelor party. That, but that does, happened about 90 minutes in. He does nothing to patch up. <laughs> yeah, he just turns true. up and goes, hopefully this will work. Yeah, what happens is that he uh, he ruins everything, sort of. But not, but that, not really. It not takes that an hour and a half yeah. to do it. And then he goes to the wedding and steals the microphone off the best man, gives a 20-minute speech about himself, and everyone claps him and says, oh, Tucker, you're great, you are. And uh, I thought, really, that he was great. I agreed. And I thought it was a belter. I didn't expect that. Didn't see that coming, did you? I thought it was great. Switcheroo. I didn't think it was great. No? I thought it was pretty, pretty bad. That's a shame. What did you not like about it? Was it all the nudity and sex? Well, the nudity and sex was... I always love a bit of nudity and sex, but it was weirdly misogynist. Oh, it was very misogynist. Quite racist as well. Yeah. Because there was a character in it called Grillionaire, who was like a rapper. Yeah. And uh, he like stole one of the character's girlfriends or something. But that all happened before the movie. We just sort of hear about that in passing. And all of the white characters hate Grillionaire. But well, black, all, all of the one black character... I like twerking. Absolutely it. loves Grillionaire. Just all over it. And then there was a scene as well in jail, where the jail was completely populated by Mexican people who were clearly like immigrants and couldn't speak English. And we're all drunk. And we're all drunk. And uh, the point there was that the character Dan, who I didn't realise at the time was even called Dan. No, I didn't. <laughs> was worse off than even Mexicans. He was on the floor as well, yeah, so it's yeah. a visual thing as well. Yeah. But then obviously he, you know, he got, got back left, left, brushed himself off, and then Did left the dirty shit. Mexicans to die. So it was quite good. Got the phone as well. He was sitting there in the jail cell. Just reached, just, out. just reached out, got the phone. And was on it for about five minutes yeah. trying to call different Realism people. there. Folks. Love it. It was just awful. The three characters, there were three main characters. Tucker. Tucker, who was just brilliant. Oh, he's great. Or he, he sort of wrote the movie yeah. about himself and made himself the best character. And well, it was, the whole movie was like, oh, Tucker's got a big dick, he's great, he's awesome. And then it was his friend Drew, who's like a really spurgy, weird nerd. Yeah. Um, and then Dan... Who's boring middle of the road guy. Jim. This was basically American Pie 9, where Tucker plays Stifler. Yeah. Um, but a sh- horrible, horrible Yeah, a Stifler. really shit Stifler that's not endearing or nice. And then, you just hate really him. Really annoying. And then uh, Drew, he's Shipbrick, whatever his name is. Shipbreak. The uh, the guy, the sort of, yeah. you know. The guy. I know the one you mean. <clears throat> and then Dan is Jim, played by Jason Yes. Yeah. yeah, you're right there. Yeah, thanks. Or Oz in the first film. I'm, a, I'm a quite an aficionado of uh, American Pie. We could watch all of them if you want. Yeah, go on. Got the box set. Have you actually not really got the box set? That's a lie. No, I'm above it. I think I've got some on my uh, on the other laptop. I'll just delete that then. Oh, I'll just yeah, I'll send those right on to uh, recycle bin. But it was it was horrible. It wasn't a great film, I don't think. It was the the main characters were so hateable. Yeah, yeah. There wasn't anything likable about anything. Tucker was like a misogynistic asshole. Yeah. But it not in a sort of fun sort of, way. Yeah. He sort of went too far in quite a lot of scenes and the characters didn't really react, which makes me think that as he was writing it, he thought, oh, this is great. This is going to fit right in. His spurgy mate was also an asshole. Yeah. Just came across as a sort of horrible person to yeah. be around. Yeah. I think that was sort of supposed to be the point, but at the same time. It that should have made him likeable, yeah, it was far too much. It was and just then, a even when he was being nice to the little kid, the stripper's kid. Yeah, he was doing it in a sort of backhanded, with, weird way. It's like, oh, this is horrible. Yeah. Also, the. I don't know if it comes under cinematography, but when they <laughs> sort of. Not have flashbacks, just like, and then it'll be like, little Tucker and his mum. Yeah, like, yeah. This is what we thought we'd do in about 10 seconds of like, weirdly shot. Yeah. Awful. Like a sort of. Like awful. a dream sequence. Yeah but shot in the early 2000s for Channel 4. That was basically what it was. With like really a lot of purple cool. lighting in the yeah. background. Shot from the floor. Really weird. Didn't enjoy it. I wasn't liking it. Well, no, I was liking it. It was brilliant. I thought it was great. Um, there was one funny moment in the whole film, though. Go on, then. The word Hordini. Oh, that was funny, That got yeah. a laugh. One of the strippers was called Hordini. So that was funny. So that elevates it quite a few points. Um, took us, the main character's fall from grace where he sort of realises that he's actually arrogant and stuff 
is that he shits himself. And the, the film dedicated about 20 minutes to that scene. Yeah, it was very sort of childish. Yeah, it was just him sort of running around with shit coming out of his white underwear. And uh, I'm not sure what the target audience is for this. I think it was the guy who wrote it. I think he sort of wrote it for himself. But it it cost seven million budget, and I think it made one point three. Yeah. So it lost a, a handful of money. Yeah. I think the target audience might be very high or drunk people. Not because it's the sort of film that would be enhanced by that, but they're the sort of people who wouldn't notice how terrible that was. I'd have to be very high or drunk though to watch it. We obviously I've not read the book, but I think that would have made it worse. Yeah. If I had, because some people seem to quite like the book. Yeah, the book is a bestseller, so I don't know what went wrong really. So I would have been even more disappointed than I was. Maybe it would have worked a lot better as a book. But I'm on Tucker Max's website, tuckermax.com, and he just seems like a twat. He's like, sort of, he really sort of lionises himself. Some of the segments on this website, Tucker Max stories, and then just got loads of stories about himself, like all oh, the blowjob follies. That's one of them, which I imagine is brilliant. The midget story. The most disturbing conversation ever. Uh, then he's got a, seg- a segment called Tucker Max Quotes. So you're loving this. Do you want me to read you some quotes? Oh yeah, just fire some at me. It's pass. I never understand why women think drama and bullshit are attractive to guys. They're not. I'm going to be real clear about this lady, so pay attention. Prince Charming doesn't come to rescue cunty lunatics. That's pithy. Um, things always work out for me because I do whatever I want without worrying about the consequences. That's great. And then here he's put a little exchange between him and some woman. Yeah. So he says, look, I'm not trying to judge you about it. I'm slutty sometimes too. And personally, I like sluts. They're the most fun. But if you act like a slut, you should be ready for someone to call you a slut. And then she says, I'm not a slut. And he says, you're not a slut really. If you told your dad how many dicks have been in your mouth, what would he say? And then he's commented on his quote there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's, he's said of this, he said, obliterated, verbal headshot, through the scope and out the brain, Carlos Hathcock style. So I agree with him. I think that was brilliant. I think that was witty. One of those things that... He's not really made a joke there. That you say... Most people probably say these kind of things in your life. Yeah. You never go, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I'll, I'll write that down. I'll control C, and I'll go right on the website. <laughs> yeah. My own quote, control V. That's good. That's yeah, comment on that, that was great. I'm brilliant. It's like, imagine if everyone has a favourite quotations on Facebook. Imagine if it was all just your own stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go straight and cringe pics. This is another one. I know this really sexy move you can do with your mouth. It's called shutting the fuck up. Halloween revolves around delicious candy, excessive alcohol, and horny women dressed as sluts. This also describes my vision of heaven. He sort of sounds like a 12-year-old. How old is he? Because he does sound like a sort of horny 15-year-old guy. Who's yeah. Who's going to suck my dick all the sluts around here? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, yeah. I'm not going to do it myself. It sounds like the person who's really embarrassing to be around. This is another one of his quotes. I'm Tucker Max. Nothing is ever my fault. Not even the things I do wrong. I always assume with people like that that every time they go out they assume it's going to be like a huge thing. Yeah. Tonight guys you are oh, so much is going to happen. It's always it's like New Year's Eve with that yeah. guy every yeah. night because he builds it all like what we're going to do we're going to get back. remember that episode of Friends where they're like <gasps> whatever it's Gandalf's coming into yeah, town yeah 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 like, oh, they build it up and they can't, can't make it. it that's sort of what the film was as well because he was he basically talked it up to his friends like oh we're going to go to Salem and we're going to go to this amazing strip club and then they went and it was shit which doesn't really work for a film because if you're going to watch 90 minutes of them going to a shit strip club and nothing really happening for the whole film it's not it's not really very entertaining there was a scene in it where two characters actually just sat down and played Halo yeah 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 the, and it uh, made me think oh, I could be playing Halo and I yeah. don't game I'm not a gamer <laughs> yeah. football managers as far as I go yeah. <laughs> Halo looks good doesn't it <laughs> like to play some Halo oh, yeah, yeah that was that was where the nerdy Spurgy character drew met a really really attractive woman Hot who stripper. also happened to just really like him and just think that he's weird was... isn't it yeah 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 it was very convenient for the script but other than that person, <laughs> that didn't sense. really work at all do you want some more quotes yeah oh yeah keep coming with the quotes if anything let me tell you something there is nothing more disturbing than a pile of shit where it doesn't belong oh well, I'm gonna find another review that's <laughs> shit what another review of this film yeah there is a girl lying next to me in the bed, shaking me, saying something. She is not happy. She is also not skinny or attractive. She may not even be human. Ha. Oh. I can't... Oh, do you want more, one more quote on, before you go on? I can't transcribe the cop's entire lecture. 
There is only so much room in a book. The cop, the cop screamed at me for at least 10 minutes. I was like Bobby Knight coaching a team on the And One Street Ball Tour. Yep. Right over my head. <laughs> to get that all. Go on, give me another review. The battlefield earth of comedy, <laughs> said Mark Platt from the United States on the 25th of September 2009. Yeah. This movie was absolutely hysterical. Remember when Alan... <laughs> Wait a minute. So he's saying Battlefield no, 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 no. That's the joke. Oh, okay. This movie was absolutely hysterical. Remember when Alan accidentally gave his friends roofies thinking it was ecstasy? Oh, sorry about that. I was accidentally reviewing The Hangover, which is what I hope they serve beer in hell is without the funny wit, good writing and personality, which is debatable. Yeah. I want to do a, co a compliment sandwich with this movie, but the reality is that I cannot give any because there's none to give. So I'll just get into it. <clears throat> This movie is bad. Not offensive bad. Well, it is offensive bad. Yeah, I find it quite offensive. Let me repeat. Not offensive bad. Bad. Right. Bad bad. That's fine. This is the Battlestar Galactica of comedy. I thought it was... Yeah, he's, he's made there. He's all over the place there, yeah. Because yeah. Battlestar Galactica, some people like. Yeah, some people are all over that. And he's mentioned Battlefield Earth, which is universally panned. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Clanger. Embarrassing. But anyway, I'll carry on. The plot is worn out and executed poorly. The characters are so boring and mundane. There's no character development. There are attempts at it, but it falls flatter than William Hung's face. That's racist. Remember that William Hung reference, folks, because it's as obscure and obsolete as the jokes in this movie. Clever. Don't know who William Hung is, though. Um, oh. Don't you? That's embarrassing. That right I know on. who he is. So, uh... Probably got a pretty long face. Yeah, flat. Very flat face. Very flat. Who is he? Oh, you know. William Hung is just some random Chinese guy. Is a is an American singer who gained who gained fame in early 2000 as a result of his off-key audition performance of Ricky Martin's hit song "She Bangs" on the third season of American Idol. <laughs> How strange. The lighting is poor, the acting is dreadful, but there are scenes in the sandwich added for comedic effect which don't further the plot at all. The breakfast sandwich scene is just one that comes to mind. That's so Oh true. god, that was about ten minutes long and it was just him describing a sandwich and it was just like an Egg McMuffin. Back an Egg McMuffin, that was yeah. it. There were so many of those scenes that made absolutely no sense yeah. whatsoever. They um, didn't follow the plot and that you could tell they were supposed to be funny but there was no sort of joke or anything. And the characters are so incredibly unlikable. And the ending, spoilers, with the bouncy castle is so pathetic and ridiculous <laughs> that it is just it just is assumed that the writers threw it in there for some kind of absurd monkey shenanigans value. Skip this movie, it isn't even pirate worthy, which is saying a lot. Because I, I pirated, pirated it, yeah. Yeah. You pirated it. I would have so, pirated it. I will be deleting that though. So, oh that's that that'll healthy. be gone. That'll be gone. Yeah, shall we knock a review up? Yeah, we should, we should do a review. Do you want to write that, or shall I? Uh, yeah, I'll do a review. How do, yeah, I, go how do I write a review for one of these, one of these bad boys? Keyboard, innit? Oh, the the letters. <coughs> yeah. Make sure your fingers are on the home row. So on the left hand, you've yeah. got F, D, S, A, obviously, and then on the right hand, I don't have to tell you, J, K, L, semicolon. Oh, thanks. All right, uh, it. Does it contain a spoiler? Uh, yeah, we're going to spoil it, yeah. Summary. Summary. Um, American Pie 9. I hope they serve beer in hell. Easily one of Stifler's finest movies yet. <laughs> this is just in the summary. <laughs> yeah. Your vote, oh no, we'll come to that later. Yeah, we'll come to that later. Review. <clears throat> right. So, this, I think this takes place after American Pie 4. Yeah. So we should say, um, post the events of American Pie 4, Jim is just getting married again. Remarried, I assume. <laughs> post the events. Oh, they've renamed it to Dan for some reason, which... I love. Post the events of American Pie 4, Jim, who has strangely been renamed Dan, yeah. probably for ease sake, is Easy getting to say one syllable. Getting remarried again. Yeah. There is no reference to as where to where the one band can go. One from How I Met Your Mother. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Alison Hyman. But we can assume 
Divorce. She's dead. Well, oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> divorce or death. Yeah. Right. That's good. Good um, paragraph. <clears throat> okay. At a very short 12 hours long. Oh, yeah. A very short. See, what I'm doing there is I'm pretending it's 12 hours because it seemed quite it long. felt like 12 yeah. hours. Uh, the plot dragged on. The plot dragged on. See, that rhymes. Yeah. And uh, and the characters were wrong. Yeah? That rhymes. <laughs> yeah? You're loving that. Very oh, short. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wrong. Yeah. <laughs> well, it works. Just, yeah. just. I mean, it doesn't work. It's great. I love it. Um... Right, the three main characters yeah. um, were so unlikable that I didn't even like them. I didn't even like them, I think that's <laughs> a good point. Yeah. In fact, I definitely didn't like them. In fact, I definitely didn't like them. Yeah. Um, the pacing of the movie pacing of a Zimbabwe was so bad was so bad I didn't like that either that I didn't like that either in fact in fact it wasn't even very good it wasn't even very good um, it was so bad it was so bad that I thought it was terrible I thought Um, the scene in the movie where Tucker has a poo. <laughs> the scene in the movie in which Tucker. Uh, I'll open brackets. Uh, Sniffler. Yeah, Sniffler 3. <laughs> oh, Brain Fart. Has a poo. Was really funny. Was really funny. Especially the part where it, where he shits himself. Especially the part oh, where. And then there's a poo on the floor. He poos a lot. And some goes on the floor. And he has to wipe it with his t-shirt. And he has to wipe his bumhole. Yeah. <laughs> with his t-shirt. And then there's poo everywhere. And as previously mentioned, poo is everywhere. In fact, in fact, there is so much poo everywhere. There is so much poo everywhere. That there is poo literally everywhere. <laughs> In conclusion, in conclusion, where was Eugene Levy? Where was, he, where was Eugene Levy? That would have made this film a solid ten. That would have made this film a solid ten. Unfortunately, this film wasn't a ten. However, neither was it a quite low five. We think that it was somewhere in between. So I think there's a consensus here. I think yeah. the film should score a very, 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 very low mm. 9.0 out of 10.0. Yeah, because it wasn't abysmal. No, it wasn't a 5, no. But then it wasn't. It wasn't a 10, because no Eugene Levy wasn't in it. No Levy, no 10. No Levy. But there was a lot of shitting, a lot yeah. of poos, so brings it up from a 5. So yeah. definitely a 9.0. We bring the film up from a five due to the following reasons. One. Lots poo. of poos. Two. I'll put in brackets lots. Yeah, lots of. Two. Sex. Sex and boobs. And strippers. Yeah. And talking about sex. Um, three is that bit where Jim gets sick in his hair, which is hilarious. Did you not? Did you miss that? Miss that? It was great. Clever. He woke up out. He woke up in prison. Yeah. Uh, next to all the Mexicans, and he's got sick all in his hair. Oh, I just put sick in hair. Yeah. Then I put four misogyny, sexism, and racism. Quite a lot of racism, which I liked quite a lot of. To conclude, once where was again, Eugene Levy? To conclude. Where was Eugene Levy? A very, very, very low 9.0 for us. Yeah. I just sent that right off. Oh, that was a really good review.
Oh, oh, it's saying poos. I'm happy. No, I'm just going to submit that because poos is a real word. Well, yeah, poos is a real word. It's plural. Well, thanks. Poo, isn't it? It's been, uh, been sent right off. Oh, good. I think we should. Uh, I think we should put this film behind us. Thanks a lot for recommending it, though, Brian Broville. We always like um, recommendations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoot us, tweet us at TFC Podcast. Get in touch. We'll watch what you tell us to watch. Yeah. Which has been proven many times, even if...